I am Justin Hamlin, and right now I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about how to graph our HSP spheres, Hansen solubility, um, using Origin Pro software. So this is a brand new um, project I have open. So first, let's go over just how to make a sphere. So you go to File, New, Function Plot, and 3D Parametric Function Plot. And so from here, you click this button to the right and click Sphere. And so this will pull up right here. And so you need to make a few changes. Um, first, you need to add a radius value that you multiply all the numbers by. And then for the X values, you add B for dispersive for Y, you add P for polar, and to Z, you add H for H bond. So now here, you have to define define your values. So I'm going to use our values for CNC that we concluded earlier. So for the radius, we have 9.7. For the dispersive values, we have 17.7. For the polar values, we have 16.2. And for the H bond, we have 17.6. 17, 17 and then we click OK after we do that. And it comes up with this matrix here. You can just kind of ignore that. Um, actually, what I like to do is rename it. Um, so we can just call this CNC sphere. And then you can find this when you need it later. And so this is your graph. And so what I'm going to do now is actually just make a second, um, a second sphere using the same thing. Um, I have a saved copy, which is just kind of a template of what I just went over. So I'll use the GMS sphere real quick. And I'll rename that GMS. And then for the time being, we can just get rid of this sphere, delete it. Okay, so now this is the CNC sphere. And so what I like to do, I go into plot details, uh, right click and go down here to plot details. And then um, I go to surface and I like to make the transparency up to about 85%. Um, and that's just so if you have any points inside here, you can actually see the points. And then mesh, I like to turn off um, and then okay. Okay, so now, um, you probably realize now that this isn't exactly a sphere. It's kind of um, distorted a little bit. And so what we have to do is make all of the axis lengths equal. So to do that, um, you go into Format and Layer, and then click on this axis bar. And right here, um, you're going to turn this to X, Y, Z. And that sets all the axes, um, like the, the scales of the axes equal to each other. You click that, and then it's a good sphere. And so now I'm just going to rename these. Uh, you just double click on these um, labels. So Z is H bond, the X axis is dispersive, and the Y axis is polar. So now that we have this all set up, um, what I'm going to do is add the second GMS sphere overlapped onto this CNC sphere. So what you do is right click um, just in this graph area. Make sure you don't right click on the sphere, but more just in the graph area itself, like up here, right click, click plot setup. And then what you have to do, these up here are all your available um, matrices and workbooks that you can add. And these are the ones in the current graph. And so what you do is you have to click GMS, uh, check box number one and click add, and then just click OK. And so here's your second um, GMS sphere. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this transparent as well, around 85, turn off the mesh. And then what I'm going to do is change the color.
So now it's green, like you see here. And so another important thing is to add a legend here. So we go into graph and go down here to legend. Okay, so actually before we um, add this legend, we need to add some points here on this graph. Um, it's just kind of a weird thing with origin um, that you need to have some sort of point in here. Um, so what I did here, um, before this was two columns, but instead I, you just click on here and click up here and this adds new column. Um, so what you want is a three column workbook. And so here I'm just gonna add the values for nylon six, so 17, 3.4 and 10.6. And so from here, um, you can right click on this graph again, click plot setup. And instead of matrices and project, you go to worksheets and project. And click here, book one, the X values is the A column, the Y values are the B column and the Z values are the C column. And then you click add and okay. And so then uh, what you'll find sometimes is that the the points actually have drop down bars, which isn't what you want. So um, what you can do to get rid of this is just double click on this graph, uh, double click on like one of the spheres um, if you can't get to this point because this point is inside of the sphere. So I can't really click it. So I have to double click on a sphere. And then what I do is go to here, um, original, and then here in drop lines. Uh, just get rid of that and then that shows a point so i'm actually going to rename this to nylon six okay and so now i'm going to add uh, just one more new workbook sorry not workbook new yeah workbook it's just being weird yeah add a new workbook make sure it's three columns I'm going to name this EVOH and then put in the values for EVOH 20.5, 10.5, 12.3. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, right click on the empty space, plot setup, and then worksheets and folder EVOH XYZ. Okay. And something went wrong. Worksheets and folder, EVOH, X, Y, Z. I forgot to click add, I think. Okay, so there it is there. And for some reason, this didn't rename. Nylon 6. Okay. So here, same thing. Um, we have the drop down bar, which you don't really want. So go to EVOH, original drop lines and turn it off. And then just for now, I'm gonna change this to a green dot. Okay, so now that we have these points here, we can insert a legend. So you go to graph up here, legend, and update legend. And just click okay. And then here you have this kind of rough looking thing. So we know the red dot is nylon six. The green dot is EVOH. The green sphere is GMS. And so for some reason, this isn't showing up as a color. And so let's go to fill. It's because it's actually a white sphere for some reason. So I'll just turn this to a blue sphere. And there you go. So then this C is CMC sphere. This is GMS sphere. This is nylon six. And this is EVOH. And there you go. And so sometimes you'll find that um, for some reason, something that you want in this legend doesn't actually show up in this graph. So if you want to add something to the legend, you can right click this legend, go to the legend tab, click legend symbols, and then go up here to text and then click on this little box here that says add legend symbol. 
So what you can do here, you can choose whichever shape you want. I'll do a circle and uh, magenta. And then you can choose the size. I'll just make it auto and then click add. And then click OK. And then there, that shows up. And then you can name this whatever other point. And then that shows up on the legend. So just a few side notes. Um, sometimes, for some reason, you might find that when you graph your sphere, it'll look something like this, like a weird integral shape. So all that you do is double click on this, go to surface, click parametric surface, and then X is two and Y is three, and click OK. And then it brings you back to um, what a sphere should actually look like. And then also, um, if you want to change this circle to a different to a different shape uh, for the different points, you just double click on the legend is what I find easiest. And then here in symbol, um, you can change the shape to say a cube. I'll just do that for now. And that changes it to a cube. And if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can double click and I'll go up to 15 in the size. And then that's a lot more visible for people seeing the graph for the first time to see. So you can also do this with the EVOH. I'll make it into a star. And it's a little hard to see just because of the background, but um, it's a star. And so finally, um, the last thing is kind of moving around this graph um, with your mouse and being able to traverse it and make sure you get the right angle for the picture. So one option is to go down here, all these buttons, this moves it to the right, and this moves it up and down. Whoops. Yeah. This moves it up and down. This moves it uh, diagonally. And then you can increase and decrease your perspective. Sorry, I kind of messed up. Uh, increase or decrease is here. It kind of tells you what it does and increase. So it just gives you different perspectives. And then if you want to go back to where you were, uh, click reset rotation or reset and it brings you back so if you want to kind of move sideways you click a and then click with your mouse and drag if you want to rotate the whole picture with your mouse you click r and then you can just basically do whatever you want and then finally if you want to add a label onto your sphere with um, say an arrow pointing at it um, here's the arrow button over here i'll just make big arrow going from here to here. And then you can double click this head um, if you want to change the arrow head shape um, or size. Um, I'll make the width of this a little bit bigger just so it's easier to see. And then what you can do is add a text box, click the T here, and then nylon six. And there's that. And then um, if you want, you can change this font, Times New Roman, and um, you can bold it and change the font size to whatever you want. Um, and so that's just a little overview on how to use this whole software. Um, and if you have any further questions, you can always look stuff up online. Um, Origin Pro has their own website um, with lots of helpful directions on the user forum.